Welcome! I'm Jim Plamondon, technology evangelist for Midnight Coders and its integration server, WebOrb. In this screencast, we'll build our first application that uses WebOrb Data Management for Flex, abbreviated WDMF. That application will support transacted CRUD, that is, create, read, update, and delete, client synchronization, and a whole bunch of other stuff right out of the box without writing any code. The sample code will be based on the food and drinks sample database installed by WebOrb for .NET. And all of the sample code will be generated by WebOrb. The next thing we need to do is load the database. We'll do that from within WebOrb for .NET's management console. First, do you see the Help Resources tab right here? We're going to click on that and go to where it says Examples. Click on that, go to Flex Examples, WDMF, and Database Setup. We're loading this database into MySQL, so we'll follow the MySQL instructions to load the MySQL file. So to do that, we'll open MySQL Workbench 5.2, open our local database, Go to that location, which is in the same relative position, although to a slightly different installation than described in the script, and open up the MySQL SQL file. Then we'll execute that query, and that loads the food and drinks database into MySQL. So there it is, right there. And you can see that it has four tables, account, order, order line, and product. And in product, for example, we can see many different records. So that's the database. Now that the food and drinks database is loaded into MySQL, we need to make WebOrb aware of it. To do that, we'll go back to WebOrb's management console and click on the data management tab. See the data management tab? If we hover over this little button, you can see the Add New Database Tooltip appear. That's what we want to do, so we'll click on that. Our server type is MySQL. The server is called localhost. Login name is root. And password is zero. <laughs> Click OK, and the Food and Drinks database appears in WebOrb's Data Management Console. And again, we've got all sorts of different tables from the database loaded in. OK? Now we need to make a data model based on this database. So we'll click on the name of the database and drag it over into the Data Model section. This model I'll call Food and Drinks. In the server namespace, FAD, server. And the client namespace, FAD for Food and Drinks Client. We'll generate code in C Sharp or Visual Basic, but we'll choose C Sharp. And notice I'm going to click Generate Test Drive. That's going to come up importantly later and save it. And you can see we now have a data model based on the tables that we had in our database. If we show records from one of these tables, the data management screen fills up with the data from that table as you would expect. There's an awful lot of information on this screen, more than I can go into and cover completely, but we'll just walk through the most important points as we build the sample application. The next step is to validate the data model. See this little button here? When we hover over it, the tooltip Validate Model appears. Well, that's what we want to do, so let's click it. When we do, a message comes up that says the data model is validated with no errors found. Well, that's encouraging. Next, we'll generate code. Hovering the mouse over this gear icon brings up a tooltip that says Build. Well, that's what we want to do, so let's click that. 
many messages are produced. And eventually, it said that code generation is complete. This single button click generated database management code on the server side and a simple test drive application on the client side. Now we'll auto deploy the service. You see this button here? The tooltip says auto deploy server code. Well, let's do that. We'll press that button. Notice the message is coming up. And if we scroll up through those messages, we'll find one that says code generation complete and model food and drinks was successfully deployed. So all is well. Now, whenever I deploy a service to WebOrb, I go to the WebOrb Management Console's Services tab. See the Services tab here? Clicking. Click on that. Update the deployed.NET services and then walk into it to make sure that the server I wanted to deploy, or service I want to deploy, has in fact been deployed. Well, there it is, the Food and Drinks DLL. We'll open that up. There's the FAD server namespace that I created. And there are the data mapper classes and various other classes that were created by WebOrb's code generator. I'm not going to go into those in any detail here, but you can see there they are. The service has been automatically deployed. I think this auto-deployment is downright magical. WebOrb for .NET does it using .NET APIs, but WebOrb for Java does something quite similar using Java's APIs. I, I think it's really cool either way. We know that the Food and Drinks service has been deployed properly, so let's take a quick look at its source code. First, we'll go to the Data Management tab and find the Download Code button. We'll click that. We'll create a new folder. FAD server to save the zip file in, open that, and save it there. We'll open that folder, and there's the food and drinks code. We will extract all, and there it is, both the client and the server side. In this case, we're interested in the server, and there it all is. And we'll open that up. As you can see, we have a class for every table in the database. Account, order, order line, and product. We also have a data mapper class for each table in the database. Data mapper, there's a data mapper, there's a data mapper, and so on. Let's look at these. Here's account. Very short class. Notice that it's declared partial so that you can extend it in your own code without affecting the generated code. Now, there's a lot more to this, of course, but we're not going to look at it any further in this video. Now we'll build a home for the client-side test drive application. We'll go to Flash Builder. In Flash Builder, we will create new project. We'll call it FAD Test Drive. Notice that we're producing Flex 3.5 compatible code. Click Next. Validate the ASP.NET configuration. Cool. Before we hit Next, if you don't know where the web application root and web application URL come from, go see this client, your first WebOrb-enabled .NET service and Flex client, also known as Hello Zero. It will explain where those come from and how you can set them up. In fact, if you scroll down, there's a screencast of those issues, and about seven minutes into it, it explains exactly that issue. Go to Next. Which I always like to call my main application main. One change that I do need to make is to the services setting, and I'll do that by going to the project's properties, choosing its flex compiler settings, and adding the string that points to the webOrb-services-config.xml file in my deployment of WebOrb. The dash services compiler argument tells the Flex compiler where to find the XML file that configures WebOrb's data services. And in this case, it's at this address. Now we'll add the client-side test drive code that WebOrb generated. I care about the client's files at this point. 
I'm going to drag the source folder over to the root of the project I just created, replacing everything that currently exists there. And then I'll do the same with the libs folder. I'll get rid of the main file that I created. And mark test drive as the default application. Running this as a web application. Running this test drive project brings up a bare bones user interface that communicates with the food and drinks database via web orb. And this is one screen of that sample application. So for example, I can go to the product screen and there are all of my products that we saw earlier. And I can edit these directly. I can change the number of apples, for example. And it is updated when I press the Save button. Or I can reduce that back to what it was previously. And again, the Save button becomes highlighted. Or I can reduce the excessive number of strawberries and save that change. So that's your basic database operations. Create, read, update, delete, etc. Now let's talk about client synchronization. Let's open a new window. Now what we have here is two versions of the same client, two separate applications running in separate browsers, and they're accessing the same database. So through client synchronization, if I select strawberries, for example, and change it back up to an excessive number, like so, and save that, that 20 is also reflected in this version. So they're both access, both clients are accessing the same database and they're both being updated accordingly. So I'm going to hit save over here, but before I do, watch this 20 and watch it change to 31. So what's happening here is WebOrb has both messaging built in and WDMF, the database access, means that the database access can use the messaging technology to update the clients whenever the database changes. And that gives us client synchronization. And that's why it's important when choosing a remoting technology to choose something that goes a little bit farther and gives you the database access and the messaging as well, because they all work together very nicely. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Now looking at a single client again, you'll notice we have the page size here. I can select different page sizes. In this case, the number of records is small enough. It doesn't make any difference. But data paging is built right into web orb data management for Flex also. And of course, we can also add new records to the database. By pressing the Add New button, I can add a new product. We'll call this foo, price $1, foo.png, hit Save, added it to our product database. And then I can remove that, or I could add a new account, for example. I'll go to the account screen, add new, and we'll call him Bill Blank, and make his password. Save that, and now we have the uh, new person added to our accounts. So we've got full create, read, update, and delete, full CRUD in a test drive application for which you did not need to write a single line of code. So there you have it, your first Web Orb Data Management for Flex application. In this screencast, we developed a simple database application using Web Orb Data Management for Flex, WDMF. All of the code was generated by Web Orb. Web Orb does some really hard stuff, transacted CRUD, client synchronization, and so on, freeing you to focus on your application's unique needs. Happy coding!